How's mommy? Oh, mommy okay, okay now? Welcome to Deadless Domain today. I've got a review from Kino Lorber Classics. Uh, they usually have like underwhelming releases, very minimal like supplemental material and stuff like that. Uh, I mean, good movies they put out, but they're just, you know, they don't put much into the packaging or, or the extras. But today is an exception because today we have Clive Barker's Raw Head Rex. Uh, been wanting to see this forever. I'm a huge Clive Barker fan. I've got like the books of blood over there and uh, like the book, not the movie. I don't have that movie. <laughs> movie was okay. But, uh, yeah, you know, big Hellraiser fan, Nightbreed, and, you know, Midnight Meat Train. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing something. Uh, but anyways, I haven't seen Rawhead Rex. I've heard this is awful, god-awful, and uh, I was even advised not to buy this, <laughs> not waste my money. But, I mean, look at that cover. Look, it's a slip cover. Look, they usually don't do slip covers. Uh, and this is actually has quite a few extras. Uh you got commentary track, you got interview with two actors, interview with the special effects team, uh, interview with the cameraman, interview with uh, the co-creator of John Constantine. I'm not sure how that got dragged into this. Uh, if you don't know John Constantine, uh, he was a char character that was created for Swamp Thing and then got so popular they kind of like branched off and gave him his own series, which ended up becoming a movie with Keanu Reeves that sucked and a series with uh, Matt Ryan that was great and uh, they canceled it the first season <laughs> of course uh, anyways we're off topic so Rawhead Rex is a demon and somehow he gets loose and he's killing people and there's like a church that has like stained glass images of the demon and there's uh, I guess it's sort of like telling a story and and the part where he gets defeated is missing and so he's like oh how do I defeat the demon so that's what the movie's about uh, I don't know why people say it sucks maybe it's the uh, effects are bad or the story's bad I don't know but uh, it's directed by George Pavlou uh, not Clive Barker. Apparently Clive Barker hated this so much that when it came time to make Hellraiser he wanted to direct it himself because he didn't really care for this. Uh, I, I'm the type of person I just want to see it for myself and you know if it sucks then it, you know at least I have like a piece of Clive Barker that he hates. It at least has a like cool release. Whatever. Let's open it up. Alright look at that monster. You know I don't know if it's true but I've heard that he's a penis monster. I don't <laughs> I don't really, uh, I've heard that somewhere. I don't, it might be true. That would be great if it was. But there's your synopsis and your uh, extras. Like nice big list of extras there. I'm not used to seeing that from a Kino uh, release. There's a hole there. And I'm not used to seeing a slip cover. Like, I got a couple from them that had slip covers, like uh, Nosferatu and the uh, Cabinet of Dr. Caligari. So, we got a different cover there. And that's probably more accurate to what the monster actually looks like in the movie. Not as cool. And, uh, same, same stuff on the back. 89 minutes, made 1986. And you got a reversible cover. You got the, uh, basic Kino disc. Yeah, that's the cover I remember seeing. Real blurry and, yeah, it's not a great cover. That's the one I always used to see in the video store. It just did not attract me at all. I was like, oh, that movie looks like it sucks. And then I found out Clive Barker wrote it, and I was like, well, I should have watched it. So, looks like a catalog. Don't need to go through that. You get like a little book here. I don't believe in the devil. A little mini poster, a little write up. Oh, that's pretty cool. Well, let's uh, pop it in, see how it is. All right, Rawhead Rex. 
<sighs> this monster looks badass. This is not what you get in the movie. I mean, uh, you know, style-wise, yeah, that's kind of what you get. This is like a best-case scenario of what the monster would look like. So, you know, it's a good design on the monster. It's just a really bad delivery. It looks like... Uh, if you ever see Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2 with, like, the two monsters they create, it looks like the wolf one, sort of. But, you know, not as hairy, but... Kind of like, you know, somewhere like that. It looks like a Ninja Turtles villain. It doesn't really look like a horror, scary creature. Uh, I mean, there's, like, some shots in the movie where it looks pretty cool. You know, if you see it from a distance or if you see it in the dark with, like, the eyes glowing, it looks pretty badass, but... Uh, yeah, it's just too guy in a rubber suit looking. <laughs> I mean, it's just obviously a guy in a rubber suit. It's just hard to buy into the monster. Uh, you know, the facial expressions, you know, the, it can't move its face. It's just a stationary face. It's either mouth is closed or it's open. It's like, oh, you know, it's, <laughs> it's so bad. Uh but, the, you know, the design was there. It was okay. Yeah, like, like I said, they just needed more money to pull that off, and they didn't have it. Uh, it's a really low-budget film. Uh, it's set in, like, Ireland, I think it was. And, uh, yeah, you, you got some people from out of town. They're coming in and uh, snooping around. They just happened to get there, you know, at the wrong time. Very bad time to visit Ireland. And uh, there's this... There's some shit going on all at the same time. It kind of jumps back and forth. But uh, there's uh, this big monument, like a stone monument that kind of looks like a cock. And there's like a, I guess he's a farmer or something. Whatever, he's, he's up there trying to get this thing off his off his land or whatever. And at the same time that's happening, there's like a church going on. And they're saying, hallelujah. Yeah, there's over and over with it horrible song and uh you know the priest kind of gets triggered when when the monument gets moved and there's like lightning and then there's like just bad aura in the air you know once the stone gets knocked over and uh yeah it's just like sets off some kind of uh mystical energy fills the air and uh yeah, you know, well, you know, the church scenes you can see like on the stained glass they have like the worst stained glass windows because there's like depicting this raw head Rex creature getting killed and, and different scenarios that he's in and they just look really stupid. Uh, very bad design there. And uh, so raw head Rex gets unleashed as soon as they move the giant penis stone and he pops out and kills the guy that let him loose. Uh, so he's an ungrateful asshole and he kind of just starts going on a reign of terror. And he just starts killing people in the in the in the town of Ireland, and uh, the the guy that's uh, visiting, he, you know, he kind of has he kind of ends up like kind of investigating it, on, you know, along with the police investigating it. He just gets dragged into it, and he starts to put the puzzle pieces together. Oh, it's the monster from the church windows. <laughs> that's what's going on. Uh, nobody else seems to believe him. They think he's a loon. Even though they seek, somewhat seem to think he's right, but are in denial about it. Uh, especially like the other priests. There's like two. There's two priests. One of them goes bonkers. He's the one that was singing uh, when it was unleashed, and uh, he gets sort of like possessed with the whatever is going on there. And uh, I guess he's sort of like worshiping Rawhead Rex as like God or something. So he's like his servant, and. Uh, there's the other priest who's just like totally skeptical of all this that's happening, even though it's obvious. And, uh, yeah, it's, you know, that there's no great characters in this. There's not really that good acting in this. Uh, I'd, I'd say the priest was the best best actor, uh, in my opinion. I think he's in the interview, Ronan Wilmot. I think that was the priest. Uh, he was probably the best actor in this. He's just goes from being very priest-like to just being fucking crazy and out there and like oh i love you raw head rex whatever uh yeah he kind of went bonkers uh the main guy 
you know, he's there with his wife and kids, and there's an incident involving the monster, which he witnesses firsthand. He sees it, and this should have been just life-shattering. Uh, it should have just blew his fucking mind. He shouldn't be able to function after seeing this. And he's just like, no! <laughs> and that was the extent of his uh, grief. Uh, he was pretty much over it within a day. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was, uh, not really selling that. I don't want to give it away, but you might can figure out what I'm talking about. Uh, he, sh yeah, he just had no emotion over that incident. He just, especially seeing it with your own eyes. Seeing a monster should blow your fucking mind. And then seeing the monster do certain things right in front of you. Like, come on, man. Uh, <laughs> uh, the story, uh, you know, there's really not much to it. The monster gets out, the monster kills, and then they gotta find a way to kill it. That's the story. There's no deep, uh, narrative going on, uh, in the movie. Now, there, there are themes in the story that aren't really clear in the movie, uh, aside from the giant penis stone. Uh, I'm assuming that's what that was. That's what it looked like to me. But, uh, uh we'll go into the special features and, and, we'll figure, and uh, I'll get to that. But, uh, I didn't listen to the audio commentary, uh, although I will because it has Stephen Thrower on there. I like listening to that guy talk. Uh, very dignified uh, conversations about garbage films. <laughs> well, garbage in some people's eyes, I should say. Not in mine. Uh,. So you had the interview with uh, Heinrich von Bunau, or whatever you say his name, and he's Rawhead Rex. And he was apparently only like 18 or 19 when he made this movie. I guess he's like a really big guy. You couldn't really tell in the interview because it's like from here. Uh, but he's a German, and he speaks a little English. Uh, he spoke German in the interview, but he kind of just goes on about the experiences and how he doesn't really remember much about it. Uh and uh, how it was wearing the outfit, and how he got the gig, and how he doesn't really like horror movies and couldn't name one that he's watched, besides the one he was in, uh, that he finished all the way through. He usually doesn't, if he watches them at all, he doesn't finish them. Uh, I don't know if it's because he thinks they're garbage, or if he's like, scared easily. Because I've heard a lot of people that are like, oh, I, you know, I score these movies and I don't, I can't watch them. Okay. Uh, I don't know, I just don't see how you can take a movie all that serious, you know, especially a horror movie, you know. Uh, I mean, some of them I can see maybe getting a little rattled by, but, but like Rawhead Rex, come on. Uh, anyways, uh, that was that interview, and then you had an interview with the priest guy. I think that was the priest guy. He's really old now, so it's kind of hard to tell. But, uh, it, you know, he, he was okay. It wasn't all that interesting of an interview. Uh, then there's an interview with the special effects team. That was pretty interesting how they, they used to go about how, you know, what the, they used to put the costume together and, and certain things they had to do on set to keep things stable. Uh, and how they did certain stunts, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know. And uh, interview with the cameraman, I don't... Did I see that one? I don't... Maybe that was mixed in with the special effects stuff because I don't remember a separate interview for that on there. Uh, but there's the interview, the best one in my opinion was the interview with somebody that didn't even work on the film. Uh, the interview was Stephen R. Bissett, who is the co-creator of John Costin, as I mentioned before, which was on Swamp Thing. Uh, he collaborated with Alan Moore on Swamp Thing. Uh, Alan Moore's a brilliant writer. Uh, but uh, he kind of goes into the Rawhead Rex story that Clive Barker wrote, which is what I was trying to get to earlier, uh, about the actual meaning of the movie and, and what the movie's really about uh, that isn't reflected in the film very much, if at all. Uh, but if, I haven't read the story, but he talks about the story. And apparently, like, Rawhead Rex is supposed to have been, like, uh, a symbol of just unleashed uh, uh, masculinity, I guess. You know, he, he's feed fucks and kills, that's it. And the the way that they battled that was uh, very gender focused, I should say. Uh, try not to spoil anything, but there's a gender focus in the narrative of the story between male and female. So 
uh, that's that's more what the movie's about than just some monster just running around Ireland, you know, just ripping people's skin off. Uh, and he he was uh, seemed to have been sort of disappointed with the film. Uh, he didn't really come out and say it so so much, but he was just like, oh yeah, the film didn't cover this and this and this. So he was kind of disappointed. Uh, and so he took it upon himself, uh, and he's collaborated, I think he said the guy that wrote 30 Days of Night, or, uh, had collaborated on a comic book version of Rawhead Rex, an adaptation, and, uh, they kind of shared some sketches of what they wanted the monster to look like, and it actually looks pretty cool. I mean, it's sort of similar to that, uh, a little less humanoid, maybe, or it starts humanoid and it transforms, because they said that the teeth are, like, retractable, like a cat's claw, and so it's like a normal mouth, and then... Pfft, and it's like teeth like this all of a sudden, you know. Uh, so that was pretty cool. And uh, he just he just goes into like little different parts of the story and reads a couple excerpts from the story. Uh, and it sounds great. It sounds way better than what this movie was. Uh, like I said, you know, in a comic book, you don't really need a budget. You just need a good writer and a good uh, artist. So uh, you can you can do whatever you want, basically. And it's just a matter of getting it published and distributed. But, uh, other than that, I think that's about it. Animated behind the scenes gallery. I watched a little bit of that. It, it also had some more of the, uh, uh, comic book images and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, that, that was about it. I really don't understand how this movie got such a good release. Uh, well, good by Kino Lorber standards, because, you know, the, most of their releases are very basic. Uh, you might not get a reversible cover, you, you definitely don't get a slipcase, you definitely don't get all these extras. Uh, but they went all out for Rawhead Rex for whatever reason, uh, so I'm glad they did. I didn't hate the movie, uh, it could have been way better, uh, especially after hearing like pieces of the actual story, it sounds like they really dropped the ball with this one. But, you know, it is what it is, it's a nice little trash horror from, you know, 86, so... It's kind of cool, whatever. It's a nice, it's a nice release. So uh, I'll put a link in the description so you can find it and you can buy it if you want to. And uh, of course, hit the like button if you liked the video. Hit subscribe if you want to see more. And check my channel out because I got more Kino titles and I got some Arrow videos, some uh, Vestron, uh, you know, Criterion, whatever, Vinegar Syndrome. Yeah, all that good stuff. So check it out. See you guys later.